Now Toshi Shida. He never went to any art or animation schools, and yet he rose through the ranks and ended up contributing to some of the biggest moments on such a monumental franchise. Whether it's classic scenes like Goku vs Piccolo, or decades later with Goku vs Jiren, he has more than earned his superstar status, especially amongst the Dragon Ball fandom. So join me today as we look at why Naoto Shishida is a legendary figure within this franchise. So now Toshi Shida has had quite a lengthy history of Dragon Ball. In 1985, he joined Studio Last House, established by Masayuki Uchiyama, and worked as an in-betweener within the final season of Doctor Slump. However, after his last episode, he would almost immediately be working on Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama's next hit series. In total, he would contribute in between animation within nine episodes of the original Dragon Ball series, and in regards to key animation within 45 episodes. 50 for Dragon Ball Z, 16 for Dragon Ball GT, 5 for Dragon Ball Super, currently 2 for Dragon Ball Heroes, within 14 movies and 2 TV specials. And the other role he also filled was as a storyboarder for 8 episodes within Dragon Ball Super. However, Dragon Ball certainly isn't the only series he's worked on. He has quite a lengthy resume, being very active over the past decades, working within blockbuster franchises like Sailor Moon, Digimon, One Piece, and many more. But of course, let's delve directly into his work, focusing on the animation side of things, starting from 1986 with Dragon Ball. So within the early days of the series, he was placed on quite simple scenes. However, very quickly he got his first action scene within episode 20. It was very brief and the movement was certainly a little rough, but it marks the beginning of what he would one day be so well known for, and soon enough he was placed on quite an important scene in episode 27, when Goku transforms into a great ape for the second time and Master Roshi destroys the moon. It's quite competently executed and you can also first start to see some of the traits that would in time become a staple of his work, such as the dynamic hands and wide open mouth. And as the series progressed, more familiar traits began to develop. Like in episode 52, he provided some nice camera work spinning around Krillin and General Blue as they exchanged blows. This is another element that down the line would dominate his work. And over time, the speed and pace to his scenes would continue to escalate. However, it isn't until the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament or Tenkaichi Budokai that I feel you see quite an improvement to the timing and overall flow of his action scenes. As they begin to take on a smoother pace and that classic stop-start timing begins to further develop. And of course, there is no greater example than quite a long but superb sequence between Goku and Krillin, being certainly among one of the best animated scenes within the original series, packed with a lot of great gestures and interesting choreography. But this battle only marks the start of many more memorable moments to come, as Sheeta would continue to refine his craft, and by the time we get to the next tournament, nearing the end of the series, it features a completely different animator than what we saw at the start. Again, despite not going to any animation school, he already managed to grow so much over the course of just two years, far surpassing his mentor. But this is only the beginning. Dragon Ball Z. It certainly marked the start of a new era in more ways than one, for the staff and the story alike, and one that Sheeta would certainly carve a legacy into. And by the time of the Namek arc, we can see even further evolution in many areas. For one, the movement of characters feels a lot smoother, along with his effects work especially. And while his effects were certainly good up until this point, it's in this arc where it starts to really stand out, such as in the fight between Vegeta and Ginyu, delivering heaps of impact thanks to stylish timing and with a lot of detailed clouds and debris. Or another amazing sequence as Goku lands this big kick right into Freezer with a lot of the aforementioned points in full effect. Furthermore, in this era, you can start to see a more sharper look to shapes for the rocks and debris, and this approach certainly isn't exempt from his character art either, as the shapes for the shading, facial features, and especially the jawline carried quite a sharp and angular touch, certainly working well with the tone of the show. However, it's hard to track the complete evolution of his art style before this point, as his supervisor Masayuki Uchiyama was quite heavy on corrections, and typically not for the better. 
especially in this era, still approaching the series with a rounded touch, feeling at odds with not only those under him like Ahara and Shida, but the look the series had progressed to in general. Although this wouldn't last forever, as Shida would leave Studio Last House, working within others like Shindo Productions and Studio Junio. And throughout the remainder of the series, he would continue to grow. Minor issues like stiffness to poses seem to be now non-existent. And although his character art in other areas, while perhaps not as refined when placed to supervisors like Yamamoru, still was very expressive with those squinting eyes, large mouths, and dynamic hands. By the end of Z, Shida had more than left a memorable legacy behind. However, it should not go unmentioned the quality mentorship Masayuki Uchiyama provided Shida, which helped develop this young animator, inspiring him to continue on in the industry. If it wasn't for Uchiyama, the talents of Naoto Shida may have never been fully known. So after finishing his work on Dragon Ball GT, Shida would continue to work as a freelance animator, building up quite a reputation for his impressive action sequences, such as on the Procure series, as well as on One Piece. And throughout these years, his style would continue to further develop more and more. Over the 2000s, we got somewhat of a glimpse to his approach on Dragon Ball with several openings and specials. However, it wasn't until 2013 with the release of Battle of Gods and in 2015 with the beginning of a new series, Dragon Ball Super, would his approach to Dragon Ball be displayed to the general fandom as well as to a new generation of Dragon Ball fans. Shida's take on characters while retaining some similarities with the ears and hands presented a much more distinctive and unique style. His approach to anatomy was more detailed with characters feeling very muscular. Likewise, his style of shading carried far more depth with a lot of interesting shapes. The poses he would draw characters in were more dynamic than ever before, having such a strong essence of force and interest. In terms of animation, his timing within scenes gave a very fluid look to movement. Punches and blows also continued to hold just as much impact as ever. But there were some new traits as well displayed, such as the classic wormy camera movement, lip flaps, or stretched out necks and arms. All in all, his improvement from when he finished up on GT was astounding and would continue to blow fans away time and time again, especially like in Dragon Ball Super Broly, delivering amongst one of his longest cuts on the series with some of the most insane camera movement and angles with this lightning speed pace to the fight. His effects work was in full force as well, creating such an impactful cut, and like a lot of his work, memorable. And well, that's why now Toshishida was, and still is, a legendary figure within this franchise. So, thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did while making it, as he certainly is amongst one of my top 5 animators on Dragon Ball. And if you're interested in a breakdown of his art style in a little more depth, check out this video here if that's your thing. Thank you once again, and with that, I'll see you later.